Sleepy going in, lively coming out. They be wondering what we talking about. Bow, bow, bow. Bow. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's Nocturnal Thoughts, man. I'm at Menards. Um, got derailed. You know what I'm saying? I'm off course, of course, of my original plans. That's why when I make plans, I try to make soft plans because you make hard plans. I always heard that if you want to hear God laugh, tell him what your plans are. You never know what God has in, in store. And every day you wake up, you never know what's going to happen. So I'm already off my original plans. Ended up at Menards trying to, you know, help out with a, a little project my wife had in mind. So there you have it. But I did want to talk about this fight real quick um, because it was a very, the fight, the intensity of this fight was palpable. You know what I'm saying? Agitas Kovalaskis, the, the mean machine from Lithuania versus the young Virgil Ortiz Jr. Um, was a great fight, great fight, great fight. Very similar to the Agitas Kovalovskis versus Terrence Bud Crawford fight. Now, um, as I stated before, Agitas Kovalovskis was not a household name when he fought Terrence Bud Crawford. But I, when I did my research on him, I said he was a clear and present danger. Um, he turned out to be a formidable opponent against Terrence Bud Crawford, even though he was the... the, the um, he was dispatched of in the ninth round via TKO, stoppage or knockout. You know what I'm saying? Um, I did look and see he had another fight against a guy in between his fight. He lost to Terrence Bud Crawford. Agitas Kovalaskis lost to Terrence Bud Crawford. He fought a Michael Zuski and won that fight. And then he just took on Virgil Ortiz. And once again, very dangerous durable guy you know what i'm saying um but the fight was very similar to terence bud crawford fight with his fight <clears throat> with agitas called velasquez virgil ortiz came out working behind the jab looked like he wanted to walk his man down and apply punishment apply punishment to the body um and in the second round he got hurt with some big shots um alivas agitas called velasquez is a power puncher but he doesn't have uh, a lot of dimensions to his game he has some good firepower, and uh, he is a machine, but once you throw a wrench in that machine, you can see him breaking down. He has He's very gilded, but I can see his poker face when it starts to, when you start to see him breaking down, I can see in his face when you can see that he's ready, he's he's good for the, ki for the killing. Like, you can see him breaking down in his facial and his body language from the outside looking in. Inside the ring, it might be different. Virgil Ortiz said, I really couldn't tell when he was hurt. He caught Agitas Kavalaskis with a good body shot and put him down. And from that point on, I said, okay, we finna see the young man go to work. He's gonna break this guy down. And 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 you seen in the eighth round, he knocked him down like three times. He had like 15 seconds left in the fight and he went in there and, and still put the man away in impressive fashion. So I was very impressed with Virgil Ortiz. He had to fight through adversity. He had to make adjustments. He had to compose himself. He had his man hurt, and I thought he was going to get his man out of there early. And then next thing you know, he's on the opposite end, taking on an onslaught of punishment, holding on for dear life, and fought through that, came back, and made work of his opponent. You know what I'm saying? In impressive fashion, similar to Terrence Bud Crawford, who faced the same adversity in a controversial knockdown. Um, same thing with you know the young Virgil Ortiz, a controversial knockdown. I have to go back and rewatch it because I watched the Agitas Kavalaskis versus Terrence Bud Crawford knockdown ten times before I really made up my mind. Even though Andre Ward co-signed the knockdown, I thought it was a knockdown the first time, but I got to rewatch and rewatch and rewatch because you, just, you catch all those little bitty different nuances. Same thing with Virgil Ortiz. I didn't think it was a knockdown. I thought he was hurt, and I think he threw a punch, and he missed, and he slipped. But I got to go back and watch it again because my man Real Talk said it was an official knockdown, and I like to take his word 
and I'll go back and do my own due diligence and watch that replay over and over and over before I can make up my mind whether or not that was a knockdown for Aguidas Kavalaskas versus Virgil Ortiz. Either way, he lost the fight in the eighth round. He was, um, you know what I'm saying, you know, pretty much, uh, he, w he lost. He lost the fight. He had a good fight, but he lost the fight. Moving forward, Virgil Ortiz, of course, is calling out Terrence Bud Crawford. His last fight against Maurice Hooker, a tall, long, rangy guy who he was able to get rid of in seven rounds and put up with some adversity. Now he fought Aguidas Kavalaskis, who is a short, compact, powerful guy. That's a good combination to have two fights going in to fight a Terrence Bud Crawford. You know what I'm saying? Because Terrence Bud Crawford pretty much is the total package of a fighter with his reach and with his skills. So um, I think that the Virgil Ortiz will be a great fight for Terrence Bud Crawford. Terrence Bud Crawford is about to fight Sean Porter, maybe. And um, between Sean Porter and Virgil Ortiz, I would have to say Virgil Ortiz to me would be tougher competition. Sean Porter will take his pound of flesh, but I don't think Sean Porter is the same finisher as a Virgil Ortiz. Sean Porter, you know, uh, didn't finish Sebastian Formella. Virgil Ortiz right now is 18 and 18. 18 fights and 18 knockouts. Young, you know, 23, 23 and, and showing all kinds of promise. Um, it might be a little too early to throw him in there with Terrence Bud Crawford, but I really never look at it like that. I feel like, you know, Terrence Bud Crawford, He's, he's at the back end of his career. He's going to be making his exit strategy pretty soon. And he might not want to fight a tough Virgil Ortiz who hasn't paid all his dues. Same thing with Jerron Boots Ennis. But I think that will be a great, 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 great fight in the passing of the torch if it ever comes to that. Either way, Virgil Ortiz is going to make um, more and more statements because he's humble. He's hungry. He's a finisher. He's exciting. And, um, you know, I don't see... I don't see anything slowing him down at the current time. He's one of the guys that I feel like is going to carry the sport of boxing into the future. So shots out and congratulations. I tip my hat off to both fighters, Virgil Ortiz and Aguitas Kavalaskas. I got things to do. I got to get back home and start doing some work. Um, I'm off my course, so I didn't get to say everything I wanted to say as far as this fight with... Uh, you know, uh, Aguitas Kavalaskis and Virgil Ortiz and to go into the Jerome Boots Ennis and the Terrence Bud Crawford conversation, but we'll get there. I just wanted to say, you know what I'm saying? It was a great fight, very exciting fight, intense fight. And uh, man, I was impressed by both fighters, but I really, really, really was impressed by Virgil Ortiz. He looked strong, he looked big, he looked smart. His ring IQ and ring generalship showed through and he got the job done in a very impressive fashion and um the fight lived surpassed any expectations that i had you dig i'm gone nocturnal thoughts bow <laughs> sleepy going and lively coming out Baby wondering what we talking about